and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Uh, Brad Haney, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. So, do you have knee arthritis? We put together our seven best exercises. Actually, it's not our exercises. We looked the world over for the mm. best exercises that we think are the best. And these are our compilation from Ooh. Robin McKenzie, Brian Mulligan, Kelly Starrett, Shirley Sauerman. Men and women who are way smarter than we are. Right. But we have found out these are the exercises that we think work the best. So you're going to want to stick around and see all seven of them because one of them might work for you and others may not. Right. So find out, you know, look at all seven, try them all, and see which one works. Wow, you did that very well, Bob. Thank you. You, you almost look like you read it right off. <laughs> By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain, period. We upload every day. Also, go to bobandbrad.com. Go to the giveaway section. I'm going to close my eyes so oh, you can yeah. say I'm, I'm not reading it. <laughs> yeah, and you'll find out uh, we're always giving something away, but just not today. It starts again tomorrow. This is not a future one. No, it's Saturday. Oh, this is a future one. Oh, Saturday. Oh, this is a Saturday one. S A T U R D A Y night. S A. So go to Facebook. Um, it won't be giving anything away today, but tomorrow it will be uh, there. Nine so, p.m. Yeah. Um, you can also go to Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok if you want a sixty-second version of our program. And what else do we have now? We Brad? have podcasts. Yeah, check yes. out the podcast. We do interviews with uh, leaders like. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully, we'll get them all. Well, yep. except for the dead ones. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. Let's talk. Off, let's start off with these exercises. Segue away from that. Okay. Number one. Um, you're gonna want to work on making sure your knee completely straightens. Um, let's say you have a painful knee. I want you to. I'm gonna say it's my right one, and I'm gonna compare it to my left one. All you have to do is put your both legs up on a stool like this. And what you may see, and Brad's going to be at a better angle, is that one of them straightens all the way and the other one bends. And there's a slight bend to it. It won't straighten all the yeah. way. Kneecaps aren't even. It could be very subtle, by the way. I mean, yeah. you could, I could check it on a mat here. Yes. And you should be able to raise your toe. Yeah. You should be able to raise the heel up off the bed. If it doesn't, or if you compare, one goes higher, that's a subtle difference that sure. should be corrected. So what you're going to do is you're going to work on knee extension by putting your foot up. You can actually do it on the floor even, but you usually a stool works the best. Brad's got a rolling stool, works even better. Yep. And you're going to push on right above the knee, not on the knee, above the knee, like in the quadricep, and pressure on, pressure off. You can actually say the words because that tells you how long to do it. Wow. It's pressure a good system. On, pressure off. This is Robin McKenzie. Now, you can do 10 of these, but the key to this is you can do it throughout the day. Right. You can do it every hour if you'd like. This worked for my wife like a charm, yep. but she did a little rotation along with it, too. Oh, you, yeah. Some, for some people, straight on is not going to be the best. These should be pain-free, by the way. Right. And the first day, I only want you to do 10. Don't get too aggressive. If, aggressive. if it's painful... Stop. Yeah. Next day, you can do multiple sets of 10. Sure. If it feels right. But you can also try external rotation, meaning you turn the foot out, and now you push down. That's the one that worked for my wife. Mm -hmm. And for some of you, maybe it's going to be turning in yeah. and pressure it on, pressure off. Yeah, I had the same with some patients where out, outwards, I think if you took a overall, probably outwards, outwards better. works better. But not always. I agree. All right, so that's working on extension. We're going to work on it, uh, hopefully, until it's pain-free or it, the extension is almost nearly recovered. Yep, straight. All right, knee bend is the same thing. Ooh. You want to check out your knees. Does one bend better than the other? So you can – and it might just be a feeling. You know, you, you mm -hmm. can look at them and they look, oh, they look the same, but this one just doesn't feel like it goes as far. Yeah. So – same thing with that. If you're lacking knee flexion, you're going to want to do it throughout the day, maybe 10 repetitions. I'm going to show you a little trick that's going to move this along a little quicker, though. Okay, then. So you're going to do is take a towel, 
you can just need a small one like this and you're going to put it underneath the knee like this and then you're going to squeeze ah pressure on changes the pressure uh, the pressure it a helps bit. it gap a little more yep yep pressure so, on pressure off yep throughout the day and you get that gap in there that can be also beneficial for that arthritic problem you get some synovial fluid flowing right. a little easier all right this next one is a mulligan one now oh. Working on, we're going to work on bend, but people don't realize your lower bone here actually rotates a little bit. The tibia. It, it's not just a hinge. There's actually some turning. You're going to show us, Sam? Oh, I'll just show real quickly. Sure, why not? See, this bone right here rotates. Uh, when it, when you straighten, it rotates out. Yep. When you go in, or when you bend, it rotates in like that. The screw hole mechanism. The screw hole mechanism. Is that Very accurate? good, Brad. I learned, that from, I learned that in school 22 years ago, 25 years Now, you can do it ago. onto a chair or stool. I'm doing it really quite high here because um, I am tall and I can get away with it. Sure. But um, what you're going to do is you're going to turn the lower bone towards the other leg. Oh. So my other leg would be right here. I'm turning it in. It would be clockwise on the left leg and counterclockwise on the left leg, on the right leg. <laughs> Clockwise on the left leg. I, I think they get it, Bob. Okay. <laughs> so why I'm going to hold it the whole time. I got it turned the whole time while I'm bending the knee. Sure. The whole time. I've had a lot of people, some people love this thing, and some people say it, it does nothing for them. But I've had people that it kind of almost seems like it, Remobilize the area where it moved things back into place yep. and stuff. And that's the whole concept with Mulligan. Right. You could do this into a stairwell and you have multiple levels on the sure. stair and then hold on to a handrail. Uh, so there's the options. All right. The next one is you can actually take like a lacrosse ball. And what we're going to do is, um, you know, you've got a lot of muscles above the knee and below the knee that actually cross the knee and put pressure on it. Mm -hmm. So if these muscles are tight. Mm -hmm. They actually can cause increased pain at the knee. So we want to hit the, the quadricep and the hamstring and the calf muscle. Now you can roll on it, but what's easier we found, and you can certainly try that, is to use a massage gun. Brad's got some there. I got the mother of all massage guns here. This, Whoa. this baby on yeah, that one even socks comes off a, with a, a metal head. A metal head. Yeah, this one. This is the big mama. So, <laughs> and then we've got the the little one, which is probably good for eighty percent of the people. Yeah, that's what I use actually. And then the medium one. This is the one I have, but I like this one. It's much easier holding. It. It's got plenty of power for ninety percent. Well, eighty-two so percent of the people. What you want to do is you find tender spots and you want to work them until until they either decrease or go away. And so sometimes you might work a spot a long time. If you heal no pain, no tightness when you're doing this, you don't need to do it. I mean, there's no reason to do it. Sure. Um, only work the muscles that need it. Now, the calf muscle also crosses the knee. People don't always realize that. Oh, yes. I'm going to use a small one on that yeah. one. I got tender calves. Yeah, you, that means you need to work it. Mm. And, and you can work the hamstrings, too. It's just... This is the whole concept by, by Kelly Starrett uh, in The Supple Leopard, if you ever read his book, working upstream and downstream from the problem. In other words, working above it and below it. And you're, you're affecting all the muscles that are affecting the knee. So What about the hamstrings? Yeah, hamstrings. Oh, did you mention that yeah, one already? Yeah. Oh, good. Way ahead of you, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe I... Just, all I'm right. To Next, leave. we're going to start. To, uh, I'm going to show some strengthening, Brad. Um, what happened to my pillow? I know, but I'm still working my hamstrings. Oh, here it is. Uh, man. All I'll, right. I'll go off this. Oh, you do so that. So studies have shown that the number one muscle that gets weak in the knee, and often with a painful knee, is the quadricep. Mm -hmm. So a simple way to strengthen the quadricep is you just get a pillow, you put it underneath the knee like this, and you're going to squish the pillow down, and that tightens up this muscle. Hold it for 10 seconds and repeat like yeah. 10 times. That's so and your heel can come off yep. there. That looks just fine. Yep. It's just, it's really simple to do. It almost seems isometric, mm -hmm. but this is the one they recommended. Yeah. They, you said they've done studies. On yeah. It. They did yeah. studies on it. And um, you'd be surprised if you do this, you know, a couple times a day, maybe every other day or every third day, how much stronger that gets. Sure. Yep. So next one, you also want to make sure the hip is strong. 
because if the hip is weak and you tend to start internally rotating, you're going to track, the knees aren't going to track right. Sure. And it's going to cause you pain maybe in the the, the uh, patella, the, the kneecap. kneecap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, for hip strengthening, all we're going to recommend is clamshells. So basically you, you, uh, uh, you put your top leg on the lower leg, line it up, and you got it slightly bent here, and I'm doing clamshells. Now you're going to start off with no resistance whatsoever, and and then you can, yeah, Brad was bringing a band there. You can actually throw some resistance in there. These little loop bands, they work well. Yeah, I was they, looking for our better ones, but this works too. Yeah, this will work. We got better ones than this, but uh, this is fine just for... No, notice his you, pivot point is yeah. at the feet. And I'm keeping them together, but this is a great one to do. Um, it works to the buttock and it works to the external rotators and it'll help track your your knee correctly. All right, those external rotators are small muscles in your hip that are really critical for getting that those knees where they belong as far as yeah, alignment. Yeah, don't overdo this by the way, because I told the story many times, but. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I started. Go ahead. With, Tell it again, Bob. Uh, yeah, you you never tire of it, Brad. So it, it, I did it uh, with a black band right away, which and, is a really aggressive. Yep, I did like three sets of ten, and then I did it like every day. And he got sore. I got very sore very to the point sore. where I couldn't even do anything with my hips for. Well, you should have had your wife massage your gluteus oh, muscles. That's, and then, this is a family uh, show, Brad. All right, last one exercise. Now, one you could, I want to get some movement in that knee because it, it helps uh, promote the synovial fluid, which yep. is like an oil for it. Yep. So you could just go and swing the leg back and forth like this throughout the day. If you want to do a, something a little more uh, uh, commercialized. <laughs> yeah, that, or, it's just, it actually, it works well. It's, uh, yeah, we got the knee glide. Um, you, what were you going to say, Brad? Well, we got this from Kelly Starrett. Start yeah, keeping things moving, right? But it's it's like that uh, uh, flossing. Oh, sure. Yep. Right. Yep. And um, if you're going to have a knee replacement, by the way, you should be make sure you have access to one of these. This is uh, the knee glide. It's a single one. But if you want to get the double one, so you can keep up with fitness afterwards. Yep. Uh, the nice thing about this, you can actually do it in bed too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, both of these you can do yeah, in bed. We got some videos on that. Yeah. But. Uh, ooh. You almost laid on the booyah stick, Bob. But you could work on the knee in bed when you first, after surgery, mm -hmm. and it can get things going right away. But if your knee arthritis is so bad it hurts to walk on it, that would be a good way to loosen it up yeah. as well, as well as seated position. But what's nice about these is they're so lightweight. Yeah, I mean, they they're, are. they're, this one's, that one's less than five pounds, isn't it? Or five uh, pounds? It's just like 5.1 or 5.2, and that's 3.1 pounds. Yeah, I can do curls with my fingers around yep. Very good. So, all right, that's it. All seven. Check them out. Find out which ones work for you and do those. And you can forget about the rest and you can forget about us. Right. Good luck with those, that, that knee pain because we can live without it. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs>